Welcome to another Geotech video. In this video, we'll be covering the use of the hand auger to classify subsurface soil conditions and to re retrieve samples as well. Here's some of the equipment that you'll need in order to do hand augering in the field. So the first thing you'll need is the hand auger itself. Here you can see we have the bucket on the end, the shaft or rod, and then the handle. And all of the offices will be receiving two types of buckets. The one that you see here is a clay bucket. And the clay buckets are a little bit wider, meaning the clay particles and the clay samples can enter freely. The sand bucket has a narrow blade, so it's a little bit harder for the sample to enter, but the blades cut the sand and it's able to lift into the bucket. And the nice thing about the sand bucket is that sand is not able to leave the bucket once it enters, so you're never going to have the hazard of losing samples back into the hole. So it's important to know what type of soil you're sampling in order to, to select the bucket that's appropriate for the application. You also want to bring a, a, a shovel with you as well, and this could be useful for several reasons. Maybe there's a hard gravel layer at the ground surface that you need to get rid of quickly, or you might also want to use it to help fill the hole back up. Make sure you also bring sample bags with you and a permanent marker to write on the sample bag. These bags should be pretty waterproof, so generally Ziploc bags are preferred gallon size is good and then you'll always want to mark where your project location is project name uh, borehole number a date as well as your sample depth that you retrieved it on these bags i marked s1 s2 just to indicate the relative depth so s1 is a little bit higher than s2 you'll also need a rubber mallet and this is helpful to uh, give a little bit of a whack against the auger bucket when you're trying to re retrieve your samples. It helps to unwedge them out of the bucket. You'll need a notebook as well and a tape measure to measure the depth that you retrieve your samples and the depth of the borehole as well. And so in my notebook, I like to take pretty thorough notes. Here you can see that I've documented the weather, the time, the personnel uh, who's doing the, the augering itself. Generally, when I go to a site, I always make a note of the surface conditions. Are there any unusual uh, things such as erosion on the surface or even just tension cracks that you might observe? Note all these things down. Maybe there's fill as there is on this project site. So you'll want to document that all before you even start your boring. And then below, I have the boring log. So this is just a description of the soil relative to its depth. Here we saw that there is about uh, 0.25 meters of uh, silty sand over some stiffer clays. And then the last thing you want to include on this is a sketch of your borehole location relative to the rest of the project site. So these are all good things to include whenever you are out on the site. The notebook itself is kind of my favorite product right in the rain. So all of this is waterproof. You don't necessarily need to have this sort of notebook with you, but if it does rain, you won't lose your notes if you use a product like this. So it's always good to prepare in advance for that. The last thing you'll need is a water bucket and you'll use this to clean your auger, your, your auger bucket and your rods when you're finished. So in this I have a large brush to scrub the clays, a rag or a cloth. And then a spatula as well. So I use the spatula to scrape it off if it's extra tough. And before you uh, start your borehole, it's important to check with your ministry partner or to check with uh, any local utility companies just to make sure that there are no utilities in the site that you're that there's any risk of hitting. So double check with them first before you select your location and then have fun digging. Uh, the procedures for the test are actually quite simple. You take your hand auger and then slowly apply a downward force and rotate.
once the bucket is about uh, 15 to, to 20 centimeters full, you want to empty the bucket out. Preferably not too close to the hole as it might enter into the hole and then you'll just have to dig it up again. So to get the sample out, I usually pitch the, the auger bucket at about a 45 degree angle and lightly tap it with the hammer. As you can see, there's a lot of sample that you pick up uh, as you're doing hand augering. And you don't necessarily need to collect all the samples that you pull out. Just make sure that you pick a representative soil sample and put it in a bag. So we'll go over that in a little bit, but I'll keep going. So right here, I've noticed a bit of a change in the subsurface soil conditions. So when you see that, it's a good time to make note in your notebook the types of soils that you've observed and about what depth you notice the change. So I'm going to grab my notebook. The first soil that I observed, it looks to be brown, silty, maybe a silty sand. So. I could put that in my log as a brown silty sand, maybe moist, and we can include that in our log. Then we'll also want to grab a bagged sample of that. And then I'll take a tape measure to measure the approximate depth of the soil where we noticed a change. So that was about uh, 0.25 meters, 25 centimeters. Then I'll also note the second layer type. So this one looks more like a sandy clay, maybe light brown or gray sandy clay. Maybe this one's moist as well. All right. And then we also need to prepare our sample bag as well. So on your sample bag, it's important to note your project, the boring number, uh, your date as well and then the depth that you retrieve the sample. And sometimes it's helpful to include a sample number just so that you can quickly sort uh, which depth you grabbed your samples at. So here I'll call this S1, and the sample is about 0 0.15 meters. that should be pretty good. It's important to remember that the samples you grab uh, during hand auger augering are very disturbed, so it's usually not suitable for most testing purposes other than a confirmation classification back at a lab. So you could do things like sieve testing or Atterberg testing for clays and silts, but you can't do any uh, uh, density testing or strength testing on disturbed soils like this. So I'm gonna continue augering until we find a different layer. We're about 1.1 meters down in the ground and the soil is starting to get a little bit stiffer and it's presenting some challenges with augering. One thing that I think is important to know is that if you do have trouble extracting your auger, it's sometimes helpful to go reverse as you try to lift it up. So go counterclockwise as you pull up. All 
Another helpful tool when you're extracting sample out of your bucket is to have a, a rubber mallet and a screwdriver. I forgot to bring a screwdriver for this trip, so it's actually a little tough to get some of the stiff clay out, but you just have to give it some firm wax with the hammer. Backfilling the the auger hole is pretty simple. You do need to check with local uh, regulations. Some some uh, jurisdictions require that you backfill with bentonite or with some co uh, concrete slurry. So be sure to check out your local regulations before you even attempt to do a bore hole. But we're just going to backfill this hole with some of our cuttings and then call it a day. <laughs> 